Wow, another incredible ride to get to this wreck site uh, that I found on the map. And what appealed to me was the description of the forest. And it is very beautiful. So very much um, like a, a rain type of forest with big trees, lots of moss. And I'm right by the lake. So this is uh, Lake Kowichan. And it was a very um, dusty, bumpy, very difficult road to get here. I guess those wreck sites are isolated and to get there is uh, tough, but so worth it. Wow. I can't wait to take my uh, kayak for a paddle tomorrow. And um, I'll show you the lake. So it's a long and narrow lake. Ah, so beautiful. So beautiful here. So Marley is uh, free to roam. And um, apparently they had a cougar walk into camp five days ago. I've never seen a cougar. That would be awesome. Uh, I'll have to make sure the tooth is uh, safe. We don't want my cat to be uh, cougar meat. <laughs> but yeah. So I'm going to be here three days and then I think I'm going to push on. I'm quite anxious to get to the west coast to Yukuelet. I don't know how to pronounce that and Tofino. But we needed a break. Um, the ferry ride last night was long and late and we got in late and it's been a tiring long day of driving and long night. And then this morning, uh, for the first time, I stopped at a full-service campsite. Quite pretty, actually, right by the ocean, um, by uh, Nanaimo. Because I needed to have a proper shower. When I was in Penticton, I got a whiff of myself that was not pretty. <laughs> Even though I've been, you know, doing sponge bath and I've got baby towelettes that work for a few days but after a week I think the grime needs uh, good soaping and a good hair wash <laughs> so I needed a shower and I did a big uh, load of laundry and then I returned phone calls I skyped my family so it was a day of uh, being in touch with the real world out there but yeah, so three more days of uh, heaven. And uh, my, my fridge has been on the fritz. And even though um, it was plugged uh, electrically all night uh, at the campsite, it started not working. I think there's a bit of a short, electrical short at the top. So that's something I need to fix when I get back to Calgary. But yeah, I love it. People are so nice and nature here is so beautiful. I stopped on the way, it was a private campsite and the trees were even more beautiful. Covered in moss. It was just, I, it, to me it reminded me of a jungle. I, uh, I could have seen like a, a black panther crossing my path. I would not have been surprised. Which made me think that if I want to go down to Brazil, do they have snakes? That's the only thing I scared of or snakes. So I'd be too scary. But yeah, so the funny thing is, on the ferry, while I was waiting for um, you know to cross over, I uh, googled driving from Calgary to Brazil, and a few sites popped up, and one about the Pan American Highway that goes from Alaska all the way to Argentina and um, 
I also discovered that people that travel for a living and that um, it's their lifestyle, they are called overlanders. And there are uh, a few websites dedicated to them and people post campsites they've been, mechanics on the road, um, tips on each country, uh, what to do and what to avoid and things like that. So it's uh, funny because <laughs> I was, there was one warning, especially around Mexico, but in uh, what they call the no man land, no man's land, when you leave a country you cross the border and then before you cross the next border to enter the next country that's the no man's land and they said absolutely not under any circumstance should you be there at night caught in between or in in the uh, uh, customs area at night because that's where all the uh, the bad crowd comes out and uh, they were saying too uh, at the crossings a lot of uh, locals will pretend to be officials to get your passports or your IDs and they want bribes they want money to uh, supposedly help you get faster blah 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 and again if you happen to give them your passport then they uh, charge you a hefty sum for you to get your papers back so and all of these from what I've seen they were either single guys or groups or couples never like a single woman so I thought <laughs> two thoughts came into my mind one was uh, you know in those countries that would be maybe a little more dangerous for a single woman to travel I uh, I, I remembered one of my favorite movies with uh, Shirley MacLaine and uh, oh, what's his name? Uh, anyway, it's a western, uh, a mule or a donkey for Sarah, where uh, Shirley MacLaine pretends that she's a nun, so that um, you know the bad crowd will, like in Sierra Leone or whatever, uh, will leave her alone. Uh, Clint Eastwood is uh, chaperoning her, thinking all the time that she's a nun and he's kind of falling in love with her until at the end she, he realizes that she's not a nun at all. So <laughs> I thought I could buy a nun's costume and when I travel in those Catholic countries, I don't know, I'm hoping they will leave me alone because I'm a woman of the cloth, a woman of God. <laughs> and then the second thought, was I remembered uh, reading this weird story about this guy in LA uh, to be able to drive on the um, commute on the uh, carpooling lanes that are faster and you need to be two or more people in the car he had a skeleton like his roommate he didn't kill the roommate but his roommate <laughs> died and he let the body decompose and then he propped him up in the passenger seat with clothes and the hat and stuff until one day, a year later, he was pulled over and the scam was up. So anyway, I thought I'd give myself a fake husband, Ernie, I named him already. And you have like a big cowboy hat and you'll be uh, asleep on the passenger uh, seat so that if, uh, you know, we have banditos kind of driving along my van and checking me out and who's you know who's in that van they'll see I'll have a ferocious dog and a sleeping husband Ernie and and maybe I'll, I'll be a nun and then my sleeping husband will be a priest I don't know <laughs> I'm having fun anyway today the road was gruesome and I was scared and I'm like do you want to do this full-time in little back roads in Colombia and Mexico and all that. Um, I'm, I'm trying to avoid stress and this was very stressful. So I don't know, I still have a month to think about my options, but discovering that website and that highway and know that people have done it and it's, uh, it's common, it's not, you know, um, and there's tons of information, maps, and 
um, advice and on, on each country, currencies, um, gas, I mean, you name it, food, uh, budgeting, all that stuff. It's like, wow, they've done all the work for me. So this is pretty cool. My truck is holding out really, really well. I need two new front tires um, and fix the fridge. But other than that, it's doing pretty good. My little love bug, my little love bug, the rambler, is doing really good. Okay, enough for today. The sun is setting, I'm hungry, and there has there's this lovely, lovely breeze here. Oh, I love it. Okay, until next time.